obtain beyond coding skills, which, by the way, being updated either every week or every quarter, they obtain exclusive, very, very, uh, I'm sorry for saying this in such an awkward manner, but very hard, soft skills, meaning that they are ready to employ team members. Mm -hmm. They, are, they can socialize, they know how to network, they know how to work in a team, they know how to build a project all on their own. They know how to adapt to any circumstances and any, any structure of the organization. And uh, so we started with 300 students. It's more social, socialistic, I would say, um, thing to it. It has to be free of charge. So we do provide free of charge. Our students don't pay money. But if they quit before graduating, for, for no good reason, without any substantial reason, like health or anything, anything else, they must pay. And uh, but after they have graduated, they must work in Ukraine for three years. For any employer, but they must stay and work in Ukraine for three years. They must uh, give some of the value they have learned to, to the community, to the market, to the country. And last important thing, I'm not from the academia, but I think it is crucial. The reason why this school is not a university, is not a classical recognized um, university, but it is not a body that is capable of approving its curriculum with the Ministry of Education and keeping it for years. Because what they're saying, with this space of change, in coding languages, in technology and everything, what are we teaching people if we keep the same curriculum for five years? Five years of the new era, new age in high tech and IT. So and I think this is the key advantage that they have. And uh, yeah, we are lucky, we're lucky to have them without any. And we've in introduced a couple of our own modifications so that people from Israel or from uh, Estonia, they only approach us and ask our support to establish their own franchisees of school curriculum in their country. Interesting. Mike Harvey, what technology trends do you see as having kind of the greatest potential? And how would you advise a trending global tech hub? Hmm. One, from a commercial standpoint, and two, from the standpoint of a kind of revolutionizing how we do things and how we live? Um, good question. Um, so the two trends that everyone's talking about, and they're obviously the two trends in the last year, and, and, and they, fe they featured very heavily on our stages at Web Summit in November and uh, at CES, and uh, it, it, they'll be the same at Mobile World Congress, I'm sure, in Barcelona uh, in a month or two's time. Um, so the two big things are AI um, uh, and, and Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. So that's the thing that everybody is talking about. Both things are new discoveries of things that have been around for quite a long time. Um, and, uh, you know, there's lots of different definitions of what, what AI is and what, what impact it's going to have. But I think um, there is a lot of money being plowed into anything with AI on it, tabbed on it right now. There's, there's, a, there's a feeding frenzy around that. Um, it's, you know, Google was doing machine learning AI when it was first started its search algorithm, and that's a long time ago now. And, and, it's, and it goes back even a lot further than that. But, What's happened now, it's reached a tipping point where um, it can be, people can see that it can be applied to different verticals and industries in a way that is truly disruptive. So an obvious example would be Uber and driverless cars um, applying, applying to that. Uh, I was talking to someone last night um, who works for a metals company who developed new different ways of doing alloys by basically crunching the data to come up with a new alloy that does a certain thing for a certain part on an aircraft. Now, that's a very physical way of uh, applying AI. I wouldn't have thought of it in a month of Sunday. But it's very interesting to see the way a AI and that, that idea of crunching vast amounts of data to come up with answers that, uh, that you just wouldn't be able to do otherwise um, is going to be applied in all sorts of different ways. And that's going to upturn all sorts of where, where lawyers, doctors, research scientists, you know, you name it. The, the professions are going to be upturned by this taxi drivers, et cetera, et cetera. And, and obviously, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Um, again, it's been around for a while. Um, the interesting thing there is, is, is actually it's about not, what, you know, not, the, not the valuation of Bitcoin and everything which grabs all the headlines that everyone's writing about and everyone's suddenly discovered it again, but actually what the underlying technology, the, 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 uh, the cryptocurrency uh, 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 blockchain technology can actually provide and the, that, the way that that can be applied in different in different ways in different industries. So both of those areas are really hot right now. Both, both 
invest. The, the, if you look at Crunchbase and see where all the money's going, that's a lot of it is going in those areas. That's not to say that there aren't there isn't something around the corner that that you know we're not talking about here at Davos or whatever it is that, that's going to come out. I think you know for for start for, for entrepreneurs for, for startups they have to follow their passion. I mean they they can't say this is cool so we'll have a go. I think they have to feel they have to feel something within them that they a problem that they feel compelled to solve, um, and that's where true entrepreneur, entrepreneurship comes from. So uh, you know. Um, uh, it's 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 easy it's easy to go with the headlines. I mean, I used to be a journalist, so I like headlines. But it's it's not actually a, it, that's not where it should be. People need to find the problem, solve the problem. And the fact that what's happening in Kiev right now is that, is that people are moving from uh, talking about products and globalizing those products and stuff. That's exactly the right way. Like AI and Bitcoin, like Bitcoin is from your viewpoint, you know the Israeli landscape and you're familiar with the Ukrainian landscape. What specific opportunities are there for established Western foreign companies to join forces with Ukrainian innovators and developers? Um, uh, with your permission, I would add uh, digital health mm -hmm. and health technologies, um, as well, of course, as still a, a lot of automotive and IoT. Uh, digital health is one of the uh, you know, that, that combines the high-tech and life science, I think that it's only started. We will see 2020 until 2030, we'll see a lot, a lot of changes and development in the, in the digital health uh, um, uh, sectors. Um, I, 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 I would touch um, um, uh, a point uh, not a, that not a lot of people are talking about, um, is the lack and the shortage of human capital. Uh, and it's not just of, of, of talented human capital, engineers, and, and, and not just engineers. It's not only in Israel this, uh, that we have this challenge, but uh, I see it uh, all around the world. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, for this, uh, I'm a great believer um, in sharing uh, best practices and working uh, with other uh, ecosystems around the world, uh, including uh, the ecosystem in Ukraine, who provide uh, a highly a very high league of uh, human capital, as I said. Um, we have to work together mm -hmm. uh, uh, for this, and not just, you know, the, 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 the things that you talked about, you know, the Bitcoin, the blockchain, of course, the, uh, the AI, of course, and the digital health that I mentioned, but first of all, if we would like to have a very strong and substantial high-tech uh, uh, industry, not just in Israel, but all around the world, I mean, we have to think about people, and people is everything, and it's not just I'm putting a slogan out. Uh, it's like uh, we have a shortage in Israel of 10,000 engineers. Uh, we are trying uh, and we are working on it in term and short term uh, 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 to get solutions, and I think we are succeeding it. Uh, I'm worried, I'm a little bit worried uh, for those countries that say that, um, I'm quoting, that they are totally prepared just uh, read it in the newspaper today, that they are totally prepared for the changes, re-future work. I don't believe most countries are ready, uh, and there is a, a need uh, uh, to deep change um, in education. So children, and not just children, not uh, 20 years old people, uh, the ones who, who have to get uh, training, um, and will get the right skills for the future work. Uh, uh, these skills will be changed. We will see different things uh, that we that we used to see until today regarding uh, which kind of work. Not the legal, not the accountant anymore, uh, not the other uh, area of expertise. There will be a totally new professions that uh, everybody, not just Israel, but all the countries should be prepared. And if there is some prime minister or some mayor that says, we are totally prepared for the next uh, 20 years. I think uh, this is here where we, where we have to uh, work together and make the change together. How specifically do you see Ukraine playing a role in that future? Uh, I, I, I was very clear about Ukraine. Um, uh, from what I saw, and I visited Ukraine a few times, I saw a, a very high standard uh, of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of... Um, devotion, a lot of uh, willingness, mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, fire in the eyes uh, of uh, young people uh, to do training, mm -hmm. uh, to learn, to be part of, uh, of something that is bigger than them, and to make uh, 
the ecosystem of Ukraine and is growing. Yeah, Absolutely. Does, I agree with you. It does have an incredibly dynamic and vibrant atmosphere. Mr. Mayor, everyone here is talking about the importance of entrepreneurs, of people, of investing in human capital. What do you plan to do as mayor to specifically to support startups and invest in human capital? It's not secret. I'm not expert in the IT sector. <laughs> but my mission to do it everything, the, every citizen have feel impact what they have done that. I give a good example, smart city with SIP, what we implement. I was very happy just a year ago here in Davos, we make a meeting with um, uh, Uber, uh, the uh, heads of Uber. I was very happy, Uber, uh, I was first passenger in Ukraine. Uh, in the <laughs> Uber work, work well, uh, <laughs> successful, and uh, much more uh, know-how to implement in life of the people, to change life of the people. Um, also, my mission to do it everything, to give it base fundament uh, for all investors, for uh, people who believe in IT sector. I am very happy Vasil Kmidis is here. I was very surprised with <coughs> private invitation, private investment in a huge hub and I hope in this year will be totally open. Uh, it's actually it's, uh, Silicon Valley in Kyiv, we can uh, say that. Uh, I'm very happy right now we implement, uh, uh, open uh, the biggest hub uh, in uh, what give, uh, what make the city uh, together with our friends uh, where we uh, work in three sectors, center of uh, innovation, smart city school is very important for citizens to mm -hmm. understand how we use them, yes. uh, all know-how and uh, acceleration of city projects. Uh, and uh, yes, of course, effect from that, transparency, opening, understanding, it's, it's very good. Impact of we already have, investors come to Kiev. I'm very happy to present, we have we have discussion right now. After many, many years, IKEA <coughs> will be ready to open um, his trade house in Kyiv. We're talking right now, Starbucks uh, coming to Kyiv. I'm very happy to, uh, to tell, 60% of investment for whole country coming to capital. And yes, of course, we're example for another city. We are ready to uh, share our experience to our innovation, uh, what we have to do. It in Yes, of course. We can talk about a lot about uh, weird things, how good is that. Every citizen asks which impact, how I feel, me, uh, how I feel personally, uh, effect from know-how. It's my mission to do that. Nicholas, Mr. Klitschko is the mayor of Kiev. Yes. I <laughs> there are smaller cities in Ukraine, like Lviv, Kharkiv, Odessa, that they have very vibrant IT communities there, and there are kind of emerging hubs. So what opportunities do you see there, and does Unicity plan any uh, expansions? Yes, in fact, you know, as the city likes to say, uh, Unicity is a startup itself. By that, we mean that if we are successful in that model, if this model works, we can replicate it, not only in Ukraine, but anywhere in the world. So we are already building a second, uh, our second innovation park in Lviv. It's called the Beach Tech City. And I think we have plans to look at the opportunities in Kharkiv, too. So I do not think that, although Kiev naturally, as a capital, is the biggest magnet for anything, when it comes to Ukraine, mm, I see a lot of potential all over the country. And such huge country as Ukraine must utilize all of its potential and all of its uh, citizens and territory in equal manner. Mike, there are dozens of tech hubs globally. Mm. So why are new ones emerging? Well, um, the, 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 the straightforward answer to that is that the global economy the tech sector in the global economy is is producing more GDP than 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 is growing faster in terms of global GDP than than any other sector. So, it was at two percent about twenty years ago. It's now at four and a half percent. It's predicted to get to to eight percent or something like that of percentage of, of global GDP. Basically, it's it's where it's where the engine of economies are are right now. Um, and. You know, so the UK uh, embraced it, uh, you know, perhaps eight, nine, ten years ago. Um, you know, 
Portugal uh, and Lisbon and the, the, the government of Antonio Costa uh, embraced it about three or four years ago, um, uh, and uh, perhaps three years ago, and the, that you can see that that's beginning to, to bear fruit. They have, they're growing in terms of their funding that's happening in, in, in Lisbon and, and Portugal. I think their funding is growing at two times the European average in the, over the last year. Um, perhaps those statistics, perhaps a year old now, but it, it, it you know, it's, it's having an effect. Um, so yes, I mean, it, it's, it's seen as and is the engine of a, a lot of the economy. And as technology disrupts and interrupts and devastates some, some industries and verticals and creates new ones, um, you know, I think, you know, government and economists are seeing that the technology is, 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 is where it's at. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the global valuations of companies, I think the top five are all technology companies. Um, and, you know, so the, the prizes and the possibilities are there. Super. I'd like to be sure to leave some time for a question and answer from the audience. But before we do so, I'd like to ask everyone on the panel to kind of sum up. When our audience leaves today, what is the one main takeaway, the one main message you want to deliver them? So I want to engage in a small provocation, if I may. Um, <laughs> well, and it actually is to two of the panelists sitting here. So we all know that Web Summit is one of the biggest, not the biggest event, IT and high tech event in the world. And we all know that Web Summit changes its residence from time to time. I think five years, right? <laughs> now, Roughly. given the opportunity that we have both Web Summit representatives on the panel and Mayor of Kiev, I would like to suggest that maybe Kiev should bid to host Web Summit for the next five years. Having 50, 60,000 people coming to Web Summit every year, I think we can use that. And I can tell you, Mr. Mayor, that I can gladly speak on behalf of uh, the entire Ukrainian and Kiev high tech and innovation community. We will back you up. We'll let you serve to do that. Super. The gauntlet has been thrown, it sounds like. Mr. Mayor. Great messages. I am very happy to see you. Uh, uh, this proposal. I told you, I'm not IT expert. Mm -hmm. But I am ready to work as bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> for every investor, for every good idea, what you implement in our city, because we have huge potential. We have a uh, huge potential of the people and uh, my main goal to give a good ground to develop this potential and that's why keep uh, ready for investment ready to, for new idea uh, ready for innovation and uh, I give uh, I look in the back for every investor for every uh, for everyone who come to good idea to make our city and our country much better <laughs> what now, you know? I cannot be your bodyguard. <laughs> okay? So, let me say what I need to say, you know, what I know to say. Um, IATI uh, is a private, non profit organization. We are funded only by our members by our thousands of members, we are in completely independent. Uh, we do what we think we have to do, and we are the voice in the, of the industry, and it gives us the force to go fast, to bring solutions fast, uh, to consult with the government, to work with the government, and to, to decide alone. Uh, we think, uh, it, it not, it's not just me, that it's all about people, and we mean it. It's all about people, and it's all about uh, the new generation. And it's all about the next 20 years uh, uh, of how the world we look with the new generation. Um, we know to integrate, we know to synchronize the, the ecosystem in Israel and ecosystem around the world. And we, and we will continue to do our best effort to share best practices, and not just in Israel, but with, with the growing ecosystem around the world, in order for the world uh, to be innovative, in order for the world to be disruptive, and uh, I will be very proud if we will succeed even like in 10% of what I plan to do in the next 20 years. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for that, Nicholas. Um, <laughs> so, well, let me, let me, well, obviously, 
so, the, so we do move Web Summit. So Web Summit started as an event for 400 people in Dublin in 2010. Um, and, and now we have 60 to 70,000 people in Lisbon. Um, we are, so we have a contract with, with Lisbon and it, it runs out next year. Uh, or this year, and then we then we have a, an option to extend, and it's relatively public knowledge that um, if you follow uh, my CEO uh, Paddy Crosgrave's Twitter feed, that we've been to visit other European cities mm -hmm. and thinking about what where we go next. And obviously, there are several cities uh, who are who are interested, um, and who we would be silly not to talk to. Obviously, um, and that's not to say we're going to leave uh, uh, Lisbon, and obviously we're talking to Lisbon as well. Uh, we, we are always interested in finding places to run events. And as you can tell from the fact that, that, that we've been in Dublin and now in Lisbon, um, that we tend, and, and our US event is in Collision, uh, Collision, which is in New Orleans, so we tend to, to go slightly off the beaten track. The main, we tend to avoid the main, the main hubs because we think it d delivers a better experience for our attendees. So we'll be very happy to entertain any, any suggestions about what we might do together in Kiev. Um, I would be lying if I didn't say there was quite a queue. Um, but that doesn't stop us having uh, interesting and fruitful conversations. Luckily, I'm not the man who makes the decision. Uh, that's my CEO, Paddy Cosgrave. So um, we'll, we'll leave it there. I'm just seeing if any of the Web Summit team are in the room. I don't know I could point in the direction. I don't think they are. Um, OK, so that's that. I, in terms of the thing that I might want to leave you with is um, there are a lot of uh, tech ecosystems that are, you know, doing very similar things to what, what Kiev is doing. There are a lot of people who are vying for the title of the next Silicon Valley, which I always think is a slight waste of time because actually no one's going to be the next Silicon Valley. They're just going to be the next Lisbon or the next, the, the next uh, Barcelona or the next uh, 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 Warsaw or whatever it is. Um, uh, but I think that so, and it's a slow, it's a, it's a process that doesn't happen overnight to become a, a, a big uh, and important and influential tech ecosystem. Uh, the statistics show that it takes roughly 20 years. Yes. Um, and, you know, there are stages that you have to go through, activation and globalization and so on and so forth. And it's, it's fascinating to hear how Kiev is right in that activation phase now. Um, and so the last thing I'd say is that um, all the, again, all the data and the statistics show that it starts with experienced engineers. Um, tech ecosystems start with experienced engineers and the fact that, that uh, Ukraine and, and Kiev have you know, those software engineers, 100,000 software engineers and more, um, and a vibrant and an educated workforce, that's a, that's a, great, that's a great start. Good news, so it sounds like Kiev is well planned. Uh, we'd like to leave a couple of minutes for some questions from our audience. Do you have a microphone? Uh, microphone, please introduce yourself and ask a question. Good afternoon, my name is Dimitri. I'm a business owner in, uh, in Kiev. Um, I must say that um, it has been relatively smooth to set up the business. I think, as you also mentioned, Ukraine is well primed to become a tech hub, is a tech hub. Is the main challenge then not just to attract capital, but retain the talent? Um, because without the talent, without the people, there is no ecosystem, there will be no tech hub. So what are the ideas of the panel? Um, Mr. Mayor, how to make sure that uh, Kiev and, and Ukraine in general can retain its talent gives the young people a perspective of, I would say, ownership of the Ukrainian society. How to make sure there is a context in which people want to stay in Ukraine and not move abroad. Uh, they look at the conditions. 
to uh, give condition to give base to develop himself. That we have to give him in key. And uh, that's why we are very uh, totally open and totally, uh, totally support this uh, sector. We, I am very happy in Kiev we have a pretty good uh, team to work in city administration regarding IT and uh, we try to use, uh, to, to receive the, every idea, to use every idea. And yes, of course, uh, to repeat uh, good uh, examples of what actually worked successful around the world to implement this, uh, this um, uh, uh, ideas, uh, these projects in uh, capital of Ukraine. Nicholas, do you want to reply to that question, given what you guys are doing to retain and challenge young people? I think this man has nailed it. you got to create conditions for people to stay, if you want to stay. There's no way you can hold young, talented, aspiring people in one place, be it Ukraine or Belgium or the United States. People ha have to want to live in, in, in that or this country. And for our people, and you know, our engineers, our talents are inclined to stay because they're their home country. So you got to try very hard to make them leave. And we have been so, as a country, partially successful with that, unfortunately. So yeah, you got to make them stay. And how do you make them stay? You create opportunities and avenues for them to implement, for them to realize their potential. It's not only about money. It's a big mistake to think it's only about money, because. Two, three year experience engineer in data mining in Ukraine may earn more than in Prague or Warsaw. They're looking for different conditions. They're looking for nice cities. Mm -hmm. They're looking for good service. They're looking for the rule of law. They're looking for the competition. They're looking for the basic I mean, non-violation of human rights. Very basic things that we can all provide as a community and as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I, can, I don't have anything more to say except for this man. He said absolutely. Right. Any other questions? Uh, I actually have a question, if you don't mind, and uh, and I would like to ask Karen Rubinstein. Uh, we just briefly had a conversation, and and um, apparently Israel is a role model in many different respects, and and you also were exposed to Ukraine a little bit. You've seen what what's going on there, but I think. Um, uh, we need, at a certain stage, there was American investment which got into Israel, which helped you create whatever you created in terms of IT and all the ecosystem. Now we'd like to have some Israeli investors coming to Ukraine. And uh, how can we do that? What should we do for them to come and invest into IT and innovations? Uh, I, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I, it's very easy. Uh, my, 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 it's very easy answer for me. Um, you know, we are located in the Middle East, not a very attractive place. And uh, for us to go somewhere is to take a plane and, and, and to go, even if it's for a train for it's three hours, but we have to take a plane and go. We cannot even go anywhere without a plane. Uh, the investors in Israel, uh, which are very, very, very sophisticated um, and actually cares mostly about business, will come to invest in Ukraine companies only if they will see that there is business for them in Ukraine. Very simple, okay? If they will find disruptive technology like there are in Israel, because I think that Israel has the most disruptive technology in the world, by the way. Um, uh, if they will find a very interesting company, a very interesting disruptive uh, entrepreneurs, Okay? They will say, okay, I'm, t uh, I'm willing to take the risk, I'm willing to put the money and to invest. And if not, it will not happen. It really depends on the entrepre uh, entrepreneurs and the companies themselves. If there are no other questions, then I would like to thank our no, there's a question. There's a question. <laughs> I think I have something important to say. It's more like a, an announcement than anything else. I mean, I had a discussion. It's a great discussion. I have to tell you that the European Commission, I'm working for PricewaterhouseCoopers, but we are commissioned, mandated, to organize the 27th and the 28th of March in Kiev a, organ a me matchmaking meeting between cluster and business organizations. And I think this is very important in your context because it's not only important 
that in Kiev there is the right environment, but also that you are connected wherever. Uh, at this moment, there are only two uh, organizations which are on the map. This is the IT cluster from Kiev and the, uh, the Association for Industrial Automation. But we want at least 20 business organizations from Kiev on the map so that they can match with European organizations. This is going to happen at 27 and 28 of March. Anybody interested to participate, contact Olga Mala, who's my colleague from Ukraine, and myself, and we will help you to get there and uh, ensure that you get connected to Europe. Thank you. Wonderful news. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to thank our panelists, Nicholas Tomasuk, Mayor Vitani Kutschko, Karen Meyer Rubenstein, and Mike Harvey. Thank you very much thank for this you. today. And thank, thank you for you. Unit City. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Completely. Uh, out of all this discussion,